tonight, in a special presentation of the Squatcher's Lounge podcast, David and the Reverend Jeff take on the elephant in the room. Do we, or do we not, forgive Todd's standing? He's shown us a lot of evidence over the years, and whether you love it or hate it, it's all there for us to see, and we're going to talk about it tonight. But we're not going to do this alone. We're hoping for some friends to stop by, friends that might have seen the presentation. So allow me to do what I will do about this time, and I give to you your host, the Reverend Jeff Kelly. That's right, folks. Look, everybody's talking about it, so we're going to talk about it too. But we're in this special edition of the podcast, we're just done. We're absolutely done with all the clowning. Um, it, it's time that we, we stop taking Todd Standing seriously. And um, tonight we're going to talk about what basically has been perpetrated as a fraud from day one on you. So with me as always, my ba- my partner in crown, Mr. Father David Bato. How you doing, Dave? I, I doing good. Excited to 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 get to, you know on record with with some of this stuff and you know uh, we haven't really done the the the, the full on Todd standing you know and uh, this is I'm this this will be good. We'll see how long this this uh, special edition is, but you know like I say, hopefully maybe we'll have some, some droppers in. So we'll see what happens. Right. Well, that's the plan here. Is, uh, is right now as we speak, Todd Standing is wrapping up his on-stage presentation at the Sasquatch Summit, and I'm sure that it's going to be available online for people to watch at some point. And David and I talked about it, and we decided that we need to have something that's going to combat that crazy. When people go to YouTube and search for Todd Standing Sasquatch Summit Bigfoot North, this video will pop up with it as well, and people will have something to see the other side side of it because right now Todd Standing seems to have like a billion dollars to be able to throw at this stuff to try and get out of the hole that he dug himself as a hoaxer for a very long time. Now David, do you remember the first your 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 first exposure to to, to Todd Standing's amazing Bigfoot claims? Well, you see, I mean, like, because I haven't been in this field for very long, like, seriously, and, like, online or whatever. Like, I've always, I've loved the topic for forever and, you know, read books and, you know, didn't really get into, like, searching things online until, like, he'd already done, like, hoax one and two, basically. Um, and by the time the, the third one came... Um, you know, everybody was talking about it. You know, me being totally new, started asking some questions, and people were like, "Oh, here, read this. Here, here's a link for that." Da, 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 da. So that was kind of how I came in. It was already kind of busted, um, and uh, you know, interested. Like, wow, that looks really good. I've never seen a Sasquatch. Is that what one looks like? And everybody's like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Right, exactly. Well, let's give the people an idea. The very first time that I saw one of Todd Standing's presentations of a real Bigfoot, this was done by his hand only, was this picture here. This was the first glimpse of the Sasquatch people that Todd Standing brought to us. Now, this is out of one of his trailer videos that come directly off of the Sylvanic project, which I now, I guess, is either defunct or dead. Um, but this was the first tree peeker of what we call non-blinking. Now, yes. immediately, I look at this and I see Michael Myers' mask and a dude with a really bad bowl cut. That's <laughs> what I see here. I don't see cryptid. I, 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 see, I, I see movie prop. What do you see when you're looking at this, David? Well, when you actually see the video clip where it is moving, it's it's so static. It's like it, it's like it's on a pole, and, and the, the the fulcrum is down farther. It doesn't look like it has an appropriate spine, like with multiple vertebrae. It's something that looks like it's on a stick when it moves. It's it, it's really not natural looking. But for me, the first thing that I noticed when I the first time I saw this, you know, which again was after some of the other ones, I, I the eyes. The dead yeah. eyes, the yeah. lack of eyes. Yeah, it looks like holes in 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 the mask. I mean, obviously there's some light that comes off of it or whatever, but it, it looks like really bad taxidermy eyes. Um, and and where eye movement, you know, like uh, that that could be argued that it was you know artifacts from the the bad uh, film from the from the the uh, the. Uh... The uh, the uh, god damn it, the stupid pole being up its ass. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's why the eyes are so wide, no blinking with that pole up your ass. That's right, got your eyeballs real high. And you know, and the, to me, you know, 
when someone presents this as genuine evidence to the world and expects people of any amount of gump plus point intelligence to not be insulted by this makes me crazy. I mean, anybody who has been in the woods and looked at any biological animal that isn't human would look at this and go, that's not real. But yet, that's what it's presented as. The very first thing, this was my very first introduction to Todd Standing, was this Muppet hair, Jason Mask, Bigfoot. And, and also, it, it doesn't really peak. It just sort of like, it, it just sort of hangs out and like looks off in the distance. It's not even looking at the camera, just sort of looking off in the distance. Like maybe maybe it's really high or something. I don't know. And but, you know, this is this is some of the other ones that came up that, that were early. Um, here's a here's a here's an early one as well. Uh, okay, it's not going to work that way. We'll do it another way. Uh, go on with your thought there, David. I'll bring it up. Yeah, but 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 again, like you know, it, if if you're filming, apparently, uh, like a very stealthy, like ninja of the forest, the boss of the of the mountain, is it really going to just sort of like stand there and just sort of? Right. It doesn't dynamically move whatsoever. Oh, here's the. Okay, so let me go ahead and screen share the next. Well, it seems this, like it moved directly out of frame immediately if they were if they were so stealthy as they said. This this was the next representation, I guess, of the same creature or the same type of creature. Not really sure, but it looks like a later rendition of the same mask, just with different hair. What happened to the big flowing, you know, chachi hair? Well, well, again, it does look like it's been, you know, possibly like groomed differently. You know, maybe this is after after a, a, a nice mud bath and then and then rinse in the in the river or something. So, but but this is also not a, a film image, if I'm correct. This is a, a picture. Uh, uh, this is a photograph. Correct. So you're going to get differences. You know, if I take my GoPro out versus my Canon out, like the SLR, like and and start taking pictures, the pictures are going to have a much different like aspect and quality than you know GoPro or just Handycam, right? So I mean, some of the d differences between the two. Um, that, you know, because Jeff and I were actually looking at this a little bit before the show. I mean, there are some differences. It looks like the, you know, it could have been a, kind of a remake, a redo. Um, but uh, oh, I know. believe I have that one. Let me uh, let me uh, back that up here. Um, let's see. No, or perhaps not. Ha ha. It's going to be one of those nights, nice people. It's okay, because I have lots of stuff to share. So Let many me, uh, pretty pictures. Here it is. Nope, I've got it. I've got it. It just needed me to do it a different a different funky way. Um, there we go. This is kind of supposed to be the same image of the animals. One's from the video with the tchotchke hair and the dead eyes with no eyelids. No eye sockets. And then there's the photo picture from his canon, the same one that we're going to talk about with Blinky here in a few minutes. Yeah, but, uh, you know, like, so there, there are different angles, like, you know, light play, two different... Um I mean, two different devices. You, you can see that there's a potential that there could be a lot of differentiation between the two images, but the problems are still there. Like, the eyes... Look at the clearer image, and you look into the eyes, and it's just this dark brown void of uh, of nothing. And and even if Sasquatch doesn't have a good like a good amount of sclera, the white of the eye, what have you, there there's still gonna be a, a you know a, alive. Well, a, like a depth where 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 the actual where there's like I forget what it's called but it's like what the where our sclera are before it becomes like the bulbous you know uh you know par part of the eye that covers the iris like there's going to be di you know different textures and and a shape to the eye if it's a primate so but those are just not evident in these pictures it just looks like a marble Right, they just look like a taxidermy button eye inside the video. But yet, now this is the first presentation. Now, mind you, this is I, I, this, if if I if I'm placing it right, it's two years before the dire Bigfoot hoax in 2006. I'm I'm, I'm almost positive about that that timeline. Um, now, if we move on to the next one, 
Now, this is a presentation of a little problem with our masked creature here, is the seam that appears to be underneath the nostrils in said Bigfoot face. Now, unless they have Sasquatch doctors and, you know, he had some type of huge deviated septum or cleft palate as a child and it was repaired, um, this again points to huge problems with the presentations of these of being real living Sasquatch, does it not? It does, but but so people nitpick the image so much, like the problems in the construction of of the face. Like if you really think about it, the problems are more evident than that. Look at the the hair, the way that the hair covers the the entire face, and the way that it plays with the hair on the top of the head, and even if this yeah. It's be... flocked all the way across the nose, and I don't think I know of a mammal on our planet that actually has a flocked-haired nose. Yeah, I, I mean, most noses are clean for smelling purposes. I mean, they... but, but, but the, like, let's let's just you know suspend disbelief for even a little bit. But the the fact that it's got this fine thing and then just it basically has a completely barren face, if 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 you're not counting the flocking, and then just bursts out into hair, there's nothing, not even including humans, if this is supposed to be like a human-ish rendition, that that resembles that. Now this was right out of his own Bigfoot video still, out of his 2010 documentary sales pitch presentation. Now, I mean, come on guys, seriously. These are the first images that Todd, that Todd Standing's presenting to the world as... Living Sasquatch. Please. And again, uh, like for 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 all the 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 newbies and 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 things like, well, I don't know what a Sasquatch looks like. Maybe that's it. Well, I can tell you, I've seen one. That's not it. I mean, look at the Ken doll hair. I mean, that that's literally. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Todd told or not Todd, uh, uh, Doug Hudson of uh, Clone FX told us specifically which brand of hair that actually was and how poorly it was applied and matted later to try and make it look like a living animal. Now, one thing I would like people to notice about every single one of these pictures of non of non blinky that we've shown, um, how clean he is. Now I've been hunting, you know, thirty years. Been in the woods a lot longer than that. I don't think I've ever actually seen a clean mammal. Including humans. In the I, was, I was gonna say I, I go out for like a day. I come back with with dirt and sticks in my hair, right? <laughs> right. And one of the one of the things when you're hunting and you you know you shoot a deer and and one of the ways you can tell where the impact was was from the dust cloud that piles off of the animal from the impact of the bullet going through its skin, and then the muscle rebounding back out. Um, these things are perfectly clean, so. Uh, I, you know, I guess the, the, the Sasquatch people are a clean people. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Maybe they are in the phylum. I'm not sure. But this, to me, is another insult to intelligence to say that this is a biological living creature. If you look at the the similar flock face, all non-blinky, the hair is a little bit different in each and every photograph. Which I don't know is supposed to add to like the the natural fluidity of said hair or whatnot, but I'm telling you, if it's matted like that, it's gonna kind of just be what it is all the time. And no matter which angle you're taking it, it's not gonna like flop over. Especially since it looks short in those first two. Like maybe this is like years later, and it was just growing it out. Like you know, I just had a trim, and now I'm just growing it out. You know, right? You know, he's growing his dreadlocks out from from uh, you know from. Uh, being uh, 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 a juvenile to adulthood. But, I mean, literally, guys, these are... I mean, here here's the image of the bad nose. You know, a lot of it is actually the, the broken tree in the way um, that makes it look like a bad nose. But this is supposedly the same creature that we just saw with the wild matted hair. I just... I don't know what to say about it other than please, people, go back and look at the facts before you look at what he's presenting now. Because if this was all fake, how can we put any faith in what he's presenting to us at this point? So, saying that, let's go ahead. We've already taken 15... Dude, that was 15 minutes into non-blinky. That's, that's friggin' enough of that, because we have by far more to present. Let's go on and move on to the very next 
<clears throat> the very next presentation of uh, Todd standing to us, that would be Blinky. I do love, um, like, Blinky is pretty badass. I mean, props to the props department. I totally agree with you. Whoever made this head took some time with it. This was like the first image of what we, who we call Blinky was presented to us. Now, in the video of where we are introduced to Blinky, now I'm not playing any of the video because that is copyrighted material and it do belong to Todd Standing and I'm not, I'm using these images strictly for commentary so we can get away with it. But, you know, this was the opportunity that Todd Standing was working for years and years to get. So much so that this creature never even moved from this exact position for multiple relocations of his tripod. I mean, the the only way these pictures could be taken at the focal length at which they were taken was by a tripod, because a quarter of an inch, you would have been looking 100 feet away. The, the pictures have been analyzed. Steve Coles had them analyzed, and the focal lengths on the pictures were actually there, and the only way you could take these pictures were by tripod. So Sasquatch is going to hang out long enough for you to set up your tripod, get your big, long zoomed-in camera out there and not smile for you in the process. Well, but when you're having interactions and, 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 and habituating the Sasquatch, they just come up right where your camera is already pointed, obviously. Um, and then well, they just sort of hang out there for a long period of time. Okay, if it was that easy, we'd all have a picture of Sasquatch, okay? Right. I mean, J Justin and the, the fellas, and heck, I spent an entire summer up in this area. You think they'd get used to me by now and just want to come in and sit around the campfire and sing Kumbaya with us, too. But that's not the case. That's not what's happening. Now, people have, again, been really kind of critical about this one. Now, he attempted to make this one a little dirty. Well, not really. There's still no dirt there. This is still a very, very clean animal. More but like we, But we get into the eyes again, and what do we see? We see taxidermied eyes. We uh, see no... Are, these are better, like, obscured by, by the brow ridge and hair, so uh, almost excusable, uh, but... D d yeah, again, in the, in, the, in the video footage where we do see a blink, there's just not... The, there's there's not the right amount of movement there. There's not a right, right amount of movement there at all. But, you know, if you listen to Dr. Meldrum's comment during the Bigfoot North intro, I looked into the eyes of Sasquatch. I've always wanted to, and that was what they were looking like. I look into this, and I see taxidermy died of a fraud. You know, this is what we're talking about. Now, here's a third, a third uh, 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 angle of the I like, same creature. I, I always liked the glamour shot blurring of this one. Yes, yeah. I mean, the, the, it's slightly out of focus because the tree branches in front are in better, pulled into better focus, but it's definitely been touched. <laughs> right. Know. It's definitely, hey, you know, look at me. I'm pretty. I want everybody to not see what I really am. Um, you know, and again, the face hasn't moved. There's been no facial movement. There's been no lip movement. There's been no eye movement. There's no been no brow movement, no cheek movement, no body movement from the same creature in a repositioning time of putting up the tripod. So he was able to reposition himself closer to this creature, put up the tripod, take another picture, and it still hasn't even snorted or changed its facial expression one bit. That, uh, I mean, that in and of itself, like, it, it's one of those things, like, you should probably only present one picture if you're going to do a hoax, because then we start to look at, wait, wait a minute, it didn't even, it, it didn't smirk, it didn't smile, it didn't look at you. That's no. <laughs> right. So, here yet is another angle <laughs> of the same head on the same tripod. So, here we look at the same creature, and it hasn't moved a bit. The head hasn't moved. It hasn't tilted its head in a different direction. It hasn't, you know, we still don't see any part of the body. Um, but I guess this was the clearest angle that he could focus on the head and not have the foliage focus in between because this was the angle where CGI or mechanical, it winks at us. And that's supposed to make us think that it's real. Unfortunately, after it winks at us, it goes back to this exact facial expression. 
indeed. Um, I, I, yeah, Doug was the one who said how easy that would have been to accomplish in After Effects with a little, little uh, stretch and pull mechanism, you know, like digitally rendered. Wink. Um, I, but, okay, for me... Again, like we can nitpick the the image. There's the 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 Klingon uh, wet brow ridge, uh, like mark, uh, like up the nose. The the <laughs> what? I don't even know what you would call that. It doesn't really happen all that often, you know. But the the, the lines, the ridges that go up the nose, um, that look kind of like you know, like you would do in a Star Trek alien thing. This one's a little better. You can see them here, the ridges that go across the top of the nose bridge. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that does, one's that's the most confusing thing to me because that's where it looks like it was more it was sculpted and po possibly painted um, but but the hair on this one is is a little bit better you know where, where you're like okay well it plays up off the off the cheeks you know maybe it's got some facial hair you know a little little apish with the 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 bald upper lip you know if this is a male and the bald nose okay I get that and then but it's got the hair all the way down from the brow ridge into the eyeballs. And nothing like the first subject. Winky is not like non-blinky. Right. One of these not, things not is not little, like the other. One of these little, things little, does not belong. No, so, exactly. So people who nitpick the the oh well, this mask can't be this or this this this, this you know looks like a mask because it's like this and this looks like that. So no, it's the fact that it doesn't look anything like like this is a separate example. A does not look like example B. Yeah. This is a different species altogether of Bigfoot living in the same Sylvanic Valley. This is amazing, Todd. You're onto something big. You know, is one female, one male? I mean, I've seen giant differences in looks of of of, of animals in the wild. You know, you know, birds. Males are by far more colorful and attractive than the females are. They're usually smaller and uglier than the males are. So, I mean, is that what we're looking at here? But primates don't really follow that rule, do they? Oh yeah. Well, in in humans, males are hairier in the face than females, um, and hairier on the on the chest and some other. Oh my God, we're making excuses for why they look different. They're crap. No, no, no. no. <laughs> like, but I, I'm not. I'm not going to really, really go into this in depth. But like the fact that I mean, like th they have to be two completely separate species if they actually exist. I mean, the, the, you can't have differences like that and be the same species. Those are the types of things that have us catalog. It would be like the difference between a mule deer and a white-tailed deer. They're a, still deer, a, but they're hugely a, different in looks. It's like the difference between a moose and an elk. <laughs> well, this was one of my favorite comparisons here is how Winky here uh, sure looks a lot like Todd Standing's face. In proportion, in structure, in placement of the nose and the mouth, the spacing of the eyes. And what's funny about that is the fact that Todd Standing's sister is, in fact, an effects person and does create special effects for, you know, props for the film world. So why would she not help her brother make a cast of his face into a Bigfoot? Oh, hey, honey, I just want to see what I would look like as a Bigfoot. You think you could help me out with that? <laughs> There's no question that the proportions of both the the subjects that he's shown us are like in in they're definitely human proportions. Yeah. Like they, every, like if art school, you could go and you could measure everything. Okay, boom, boom, boom. These are human proportions. Even you know we say that Blinky looks like amazing. You know, it's a great great prop. But what's described typically is is a wider mouth and a longer upper lip than what we see here. I mean, they've used human proportions, possibly a cast to build upon. I don't know. Well, like, whatever it is. But they, they've used human proportions. Um, you know, artists oftentimes put themselves into their pieces. I mean, it's absolutely true. Like, it, you draw, you know... <laughs> Anything that's 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 anthropomorphic at all, like as yourself, right? And you know that's one of the problems with the Smithsonian stuff, where they have all the uh, all the ancient human species types creatures along our line. It's like when they recreate the faces on those things, they always make them look so human-like, when in fact they probably weren't. They were probably far more apish 
non-human like, but the artists who are actually putting the clay onto these creatures kind of mold themselves into it a little bit, and it kind of softens them up just a little bit. But you know, just the fact that you know this doesn't look like an ape to me one little bit. It definitely looks like a human. Goes to show that he wants to say that I that they're that these are the forest people, and that's probably why they went that route with it. I I, I don't know. I, I really haven't gotten that deep into his politics. Well, well in, into his politics just briefly, like the the whole protection campaign is is to save the the Sasquatch people and and to have them. Um, Listed as a as a species, but he started out with Gigantopithecus as as like you know they're they're a, they're a, you know okay if you believe that they're Gigantopithecus and you've made one of the most like modernly anthropomorphic sculptures ever to to, to you you don't even understand what you're trying to say there it should look like a pongid. it should look like Shiva Pithecus. it should look like you know Orion Pithecus. it should look like orangutan like if it's going to be a large dwelling a ground dwelling pongid versus Winky who looks like a dude with hypertrichosis right well now let's let's go ahead and bring up party item number three uh, party item number three is this year's 2014 presentation of what a Bigfoot should look like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, the adjusted ones so that people can see what we're actually looking at here. Um, you know, this now is what a Bigfoot looks like all of a sudden. And now, in 2014. Right. Well, okay, Todd, if... if this is what a Bigfoot looks like, then the other two have to be fake, right? Or a third new specialized species of Sasquatch in Todd Standing's research area. Amazing, Todd. Well, bravo. Well, bravo. Yeah, bravo. We now have a brow ridge that's completely hairless. It looks as the nose is probably completely hairless as well. The, the eyes, it's actually, you can't even tell, which is fine. We don't need to nitpick this. But what we need to see is that this is a third completely different version of Sasquatch. Not right. not like, oh, well, variation. Well, the, the skunk ape is smaller and more diminutive and has longer hair than the, the, the Pacific Northwest, the large Sasquatch beast. No, no. We're talking about the same area, and we're talking about things that are going to be even more different than that you know like the, so let's 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 go ahead and let's go ahead and bring them all up let's 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 go ahead and bring up the final discussion you know here folks the three types of sasquatch that Todd Standing would like us to believe he has found i i, I don't know about you but i, I think sweetums on the bottom right is probably my favorite I do love me some sweetums, um, although Ralph the dog is he's, he's he's pretty badass as well. But but no, I mean like really look at we have again we're talking about the flocking on the faces the the application that they used like we had this flocked bear face we had this hairy face with the hair all the way down to the brow and then we have this really kind of gorilla looking ish thing like maybe uh could, could be like uh, I'm still forgetting his name like the 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 guy who did the perfect predator neanderthal thing that so drives me nuts cuz there's no science behind that but um but like it kind of doing that um it's like okay well this didn't work okay we'll try this this didn't work okay well let's try this well that's not going to work either you know why because because of this array that we have right here it's absolutely asinine to to even if he got lucky and he got into somebody else's research area and got a hold of film of something he can't he's all it's already ruined like nobody's gonna believe it everybody is just gonna point back in time and in history and just be like well well i don't believe any of it yeah you know and you know while this is up and i'm gonna go on one of my little rants here for a moment you know people ask me why i care well, why do you care what Todd Standing's telling people? Why do you care what Todd Standing's telling the world? Because it's a lie, people. And I'm about the bottom line when it comes to this 
topic. I don't have anything to prove to anybody out there, but there is so much garbage and woo and trash that gets, that gets passed around in this particular subject that somebody's got to combat the crap that comes along. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm looking at three different creatures here that are all made by the same effects house with more money spilled into it as time went on to try and make it more believable. And now you've got a clown sitting there at the Sasquatch Summit trying to present you with more obscure friggin' video backed by a PhD who is on the paid menu trying to convince you that this hoaxer has now has something real and you should give him nearly a million dollars for next year's research so he can go out and get definitive proof that he's already standing on stage right now trying to convince you that he's got that definitive proof in front of you. That's why I care. It's a fraud on the people, and the regular people out there, they're going to come across this podcast and finally find an intelligent voice behind it. I'm looking out for you. I'm not sending this asshole any money. Neither should you. This sermon was brought to you by the Reverend Jeff Kelly. May the squash be with you. Suck it! That's how I feel about that one. Very nicely done. That's <laughs> that that that's pretty. That's exactly where I am too. It's just don't don't bite people. Don't bite again. I know I know some people are gonna bite, but just don't bite. Don't do it. Don't give that guy any money. A million dollars to research what? I don't understand where a million dollars is going to go. I mean, he's already not produced anything this far, but. A bunch of crap. Just straight up. A bunch of frigging crap. That's what he's presented so far. This image right here is just as ridiculous as anything he's presented so far. I mean, this is the 2014 Bigfoot. I, I, if I'm going out to look for anything in the woods, it's going to be the one on the right. <laughs> I think it looks more like a Bigfoot than the one on the left. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, and, and I, I, I don't, I just don't even know where to go with this. Uh, aside from one thing, I would like to bring up is that it's the people who are are trying to to pull, pull off these frauds and hoaxes and wh whatnot, and and it is, it, it's it's a maybe a hoax is more in good fun, and and fraud is when you're asking for money, you know right. the. The, the the common denominator between let's just say Rick Dyer, Melba Ketchum, and Todd Standing is that in between like their frauds where they do get money and 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 failure being found out, they disappear for a particular amount of time until they feel that they can come back and enough people were forgotten or people will forgive or there's enough excitement that they can build that it that people just will ignore what's happened before and i mean god damn it like <laughs> stop it yeah. stop ignoring what hap wh wh where we've been what we knew and stop forgiving people oh sorry you took my money the last time and didn't give me anything but maybe it'll be different this time I know I didn't believe you last time, but now you have this fake doctor who says you have something, so I'm going to go ahead and believe you this time, and here's some more of my money. And people are still giving Melba Ketchum money. That woman took a half a million dollars of Wally's money and returned garbage, and now people are still giving her money to, to, to test stolen friggin' remains off of Indian burial grounds. And dog man. I mean... Where does it all stop? I don't know, but I'm just going to be a voice of reason in the darkness, and that's kind of why we do this thing, isn't it, David? I, that, that's what I. That's the reason I keep doing this. Like, uh, there's so many times, like, God, what are we going to talk about? It's like, no, we have to keep going because stuff like this is going to come up, and we need to be able to address it. And I'm just, I'm glad to be, I'm glad to help the the, the newbies, and I'm glad to help. Maybe change the minds of some people who are willing to forgive this BS and and just let it ruin real research for everyone else. Right. Well, one of the last things I wanted to talk about before we get out of here on this impromptu night, um, apparently there has been um, 
a new article posted about the actual research area that Todd Standing took these people to to have these supposed encounters. And it came out of the Sasquatch voice with David Rodriguez. And um, basically, it's a really long... Uh, it's a really long article. It's an in-depth article about Todd Standing and basically the way he conducts himself. Um, Ken Walker, we talked about the other night when when uh, Justin Smeha was on with us, and Ken Walker is a taxidermist. is a famous taxidermist. He's one of the best taxidermists in the world. He happens to know Todd Standing, and he's worked with Todd Standing in the past. Well, that is actually the activity activity area that. Todd Standing took Dr. Meldrum and Les Stroud and Bender Nagel and Sonia to where these incredible encounters happened that he was able to track them to because basically he just intruded upon somebody else's known active Bigfoot location. Now, I mean, I, nobody's really heard of Ken Walker in the Bigfoot world because dude's not in the Bigfoot world. Dude's a guy on his own Bigfoot on his own Bigfoot adventure. He's out for his own answers, and he doesn't need any of us to look for him. He's a, he's a worldwide renowned hunter. You know, what does he need the Bigfoot world for to go out and track an animal? He's going to find the answers for himself. Well, apparently Todd heard of his good luck and what was going on with it and basically just moved in and took over because, well, he's got enough money behind him to actually do that. What does that say about somebody's ethics? That would do that. But, oh yeah, this is my site. This is this is my location. I worked hard to get this location. I'll take you here just to later find out that it actually belonged to somebody else. Yeah, I. I <laughs> hmm. well, it sounded like they knew each other, and it was probably said, "Hey, I had activity up here," and he probably just moved straight in. Not even que no no asking no questions just did the thing. I mean, it's something to, to to be cautious about. Like if if you have an area that you want to keep secret, keep it a secret. Don't talk about it. But I don't know, man. I mean, that's a, this is an actual recreation by Ken Walker. This is some of his taxidermy work. I mean, that's just that thing looks like it's alive. It's a whole lot better than the fake uh, heads that Standing's using. So we know Ken Walker's not doing his work. <laughs> if he presented this as blinky, I'd probably believe it. <laughs> just just sh shear the ears off and go with Right, exactly. Well, that's what Melba wanted us to believe. There was panda bear in there. So, you know, that this is the this is the type of creep ball that we're dealing with here, people. I mean, we're not dealing with anybody who has any amount of credibility or ethics that you want to give a million dollars to. What's he gonna return for your million dollars? A promise that he's gonna run around and do the same thing he did this year, next year. That's what you're getting for your million dollars. You're you're getting a digital download of something that's already finished and going to be shown in Seattle on Monday. And a promise that he's going to go out and do the same thing next year that he did this year. I don't know if that's worth a million dollars. How about you? Not to me. Not even a little bit. Are you, but are you kidding me? A million dollars. When's the last Kickstarter that you... I mean, indie Films... They're like, oh, we need to raise thirty thousand dollars, not nine hundred thousand dollars. The only reason I said it before and I'll say it again that you would set up that amount of money on on a Kickstarter is so that it doesn't fund and it's just for it's for PR and he doesn't expect to take anybody's money. Right. Well, you know, you would hope that. But I honestly think that the ego that that bastard has after being on TV with Les Stroud, and I'm, I'm the responsible person for all those great big feet, Bigfoot TV shows, that's me and Todd Standing, of course. Um, now that I've been on TV, don't you know? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Now, I honestly think that, that asshole thinks he can get a million dollars out of people to fund his research next year because of the Bigfoot North radio failure. And by the way, what the hell did the Bigfoot North Radio show ever really tell us about anything that went on there? Did did they ever really give us anything? They they hinted at stuff that uh, Dr. Meldrum recently confirmed, but they never confirmed it on the show. They didn't really talk about the 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 trip, which so. And here's another thing that everybody needs to realize is that Bigfoot North Radio show was kind of a 
kind of a wrap up. Um, you know, maybe it was an idea that they had while they were up there, but th- th- they're talking about a 10 day trip. Like this documentary was filmed in a 10 day trip from anybody outside of Todd standing and possibly Sonia who was with him. Uh, you know, like that's problematic. Right, problematic. Hey, now joining us live is David Rodriguez, the writer of the article that we were just speaking about from the Sasquatch Voice, uh, uh, and he's going to give us his insight to, to what's going on with the research area that we're talking about. Thanks for joining us, David. Well, hi. How you doing? Oh, I didn't expect to be talking, really, but okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. You're doing great. So, I don't know. Um... I've been kind of following this Todd Standing character for a number of years, uh, back when he was on Unexplained Mysteries and a number of forums, and a lot of his stuff never added up then, and it, you know, ever since, it just hasn't added up. So, right. you know, I just felt a responsibility to document his stuff and uh, bring it to light when I see where things are contradicting. Now, you you came across the information of, of where he took these guys uh, to uh, uh, Ken Walker's location. Is, is that uh, you know where did you where did you find that information? Well, over the last I don't know six months or so, uh, over on Bigfoot forums, there's been discussions about Todd, and I post there occasionally, and you know we talk about uh, you know the video aspects of his you know production. Uh, as well as other unusual uh, sides, like that is that is under his alias, he owns a video production company. Um, but anyways, uh, Ken that's Walker, the, uh, outstanding productions and correct. video guys. Yeah, that's that's been his sister's also an FX girl, if I'm not mistaken. Well, there seems to be some debate about that, and Todd has maybe encouraged this debate to go on because he's never corrected it. There is a number of references over the years, past years, of his younger sister. Uh, she was the, I, the one who, w- who took that original video of their expedition, the one you see where uh, it's across this little stream and into the trees and the snow in the trees is moving. And Actually, none of us have actually paid to see that one. So, uh... well, it's not a pay for view, but it's around. And then, uh, but then there's Louise, uh, who is the GM at their company, and, uh, you know, there's just been discussions or debates as to whether, you know, who she is. So that's up in the air. And, you know, the why Todd has an alias and why he doesn't, you know, reveal who Louise is. And, you know, because he's had many opportunities over the years where her name has come up and he has never done it. So that's a new mystery here. You know, that was one of the things that, that we never really understood with, with Todd Standing is, you know, what's the end game? What, what, do you, what do you think his end game is with all of this bigfootery? <clears throat> he seems to have a knack for being able to manipulate on a mass scale. He knows to be able to, you know, he knows, to be able to, he knows that if you're going to do something, you do it big. And he's going full bore and going for the, the promotional value and, and just he's going big. And he, he knows that this can produce results as long as he's not caught. And he's got a, you know, a following of young people, but uh, and they don't ask, ask the hard questions, but there's people like myself and others who have been around a long time and know his past. And, but where he's headed, I think he's looking for fame and fortune. Even if he ends up, you know, producing uh, fake videos. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah. we're we're looking at on the screen here at his three different levels of Bigfoot productions, and we were talking about them earlier, being non blinky, winky, and whatever this 2014 monkey face now that they're presenting to us as as Bigfoot. <laughs> and you know, the way we're looking at it is basically, if one is real, then the other two has to be fake. You know, so what are we? You know, <laughs> if we don't remember history, we'll repeat it. 
that's where we're looking at. I was just talking to, to David. You know, he says that he thinks that the Kickstarter page is just up there for promotion that he doesn't actually expect to get that million dollars Canadian. And I say no. I think he's got an ego big enough that he thinks he can get it from the public, and that there won't be enough outcry from the real people that understand what's going on for him to actually raise that money to be able to play it around in the woods next year to do the same thing. What are you thinking? Well, you're probably probably correct there because one of his tactics over the over the last decade and he's proven it over and over again, is he leapfrogs from one claim to the next, one little show to the next, and he never really closes out the other one, never validates you know, the, the, the other ones, but it enables him to proceed to the next. So, yeah, he, he knows that even if he doesn't reach that, he can step, use it as a stepping tone, stone to some other uh, charade. That's yeah, how that, that's exactly the way we've been looking at it all along, and that's why we had this show tonight. Was you know, everybody's going to be they're going to be they're going to be googling Todd standing over the next week, months, you know, six months where all this crap is going on. And there's got to be something out there to combat the craziness of what's really going on, puts it all together. Because he's going to want us to forget about non-winky and blinky. See, you know, he's going to want us now to concentrate on this 2014 release and just forget about this old stuff that happened because this new stuff is so much better. But I'm one of those people who can't forget the the, the awfulness of what's in the past. Yeah, you can't forget history. You you got to keep bringing up his prior, you know, little tricks. Well, there you have it, people. I appreciate you stopping in with us, Dave, but I wanted to get it from you firsthand. Uh, uh, your thoughts on the Toll Todd Standing uh, uh, Area, you know, Bigfoot Research Area article, and I appreciate you joining us. We might have you on another night. How's that sound? Sounds good. Uh, always willing. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, David. We'll talk to you again. All right. Have a good night. Well, there you have it, people. The art- right of the article itself, the Squatcher's Lounge podcast, you know, we stretch out to do what's right as often as we can. And it looks like we're not going to get anybody brave enough from the Sasquatch Summit to uh, chime in with us. I guess it's just such a, maybe it's an all-and-out brawl. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear that. I would really love to hear that Les Stroud manned up and told, Les, and told Todd Standing that he is not the man responsible for the huge success of his Bigfoot the uh, Survivor Man Bigfoot series, and I hope he's plenty of big enough man to say, I didn't see no damn Bigfoot when I was out with you, but I don't think that's how it's going to go down, because I think somebody's still on the payroll. What are you thinking about wrapping this up, David? Uh, with, with the less Stroud involvement, and, and the more and more, you know, the, uh, other people that he's, he's bringing in, he's... Using Dr. Meldrum and 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 Bitternagel as entertainment value, not for their accreditations and like what what are they going to say about the you know and Les Stroud is a showman. He's a businessman. He has a long running TV show that he basically he, I mean he pulled out of his ass and still it goes on and does things so. He's got a stake to make this a, a a fun thing for everybody to watch as well. You know, the the truth of the matter isn't his concern as much as it is like you know this show has kind of tried to take that on. Um, so, I, you know, don't beat up less for for getting in with with this because it's entertainment. It's like you know, don't piss on Matt Moneymaker and 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 Bobo because there's something on the hill. You know that's it, it's it's entertainment, and you got to know when entertainment is entertainment. Um, but Todd is doing this for 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 other and bigger reasons, and and to keep propelling himself into into the limelight so that he can he can get his his fifteen into minutes. into stardom, just so he can force his crap down our throat. Looks he's like they're actually for, maybe he's shopping for a new uh, a new sugar daddy. I don't know. Uh, might be, maybe shopping for a TV show, although he's not all that entertaining on TV. I've always said I have no problem with Les Stroud's involvement with the Bigfoot North people. He's an entertainer. He's a TV dude. I, I don't have any problem with that guy putting money in his pocket to say whatever the hell they want him to say on TV. That's what the guy does. I do have a problem with a 
credentialed PhD doing the same thing, taking money and saying whatever they want them to say on TV. You can't do that. That's like a politician being taken out to dinner by GM. It doesn't work out very well for the politician. Well, that's what we have in this particular situation. We have two paid PhDs who seem to be saying whatever it is that they're being told to say or at least dancing around the matter enough to where they don't have to say anything at all. That, I think, is really the most disturbing thing. Jeff, D D Dr. Meldrum's response to his involvement with uh, seeing a Bigfoot uh, after saying on the Bigfoot North Show that he hadn't seen a Bigfoot, I, I don't know how contradictions like that are going to pan out, but they're definitely happening every day. So that's what's going on with the Bigfoot North and Todd standing fraud in the Bigfoot world. Anything to finish wrapping up with, David? Stop hoaxing us. <laughs> That, that's it. <laughs> well, exactly. Knock it the hell off. People, don't give that man any of your money because that's really, that's the biggest fraud of it all is if you give your hard-earned money to that clown. You want to give it to somebody, contact us here at the Squatch Your Science Podcast and we'll put it towards our big-ass fleer in space. You just want to give away your money, we're going to stockpile that stuff and we're just going to take PayPal donations up till we get $1 billion and we're going to figure out how to put a big ass flare in space and find Bigfoot. With that, for David Dat for, for Father David Dat for, for Father David Batdorf, I'm the Reverend Jeff Kelly. Thanks for watching this week and may the Squatch be with you. Whoop, whoop. God, the Muppets. I don't know, man. Genius. <laughs> and, uh, Please, people. I, I, you got you. You got MJ. I got Sweetums. I win. That's right.